Sunday morning to jumpstart your week of victory. I believe God has a great week ahead for you, and victory is yours in Jesus' name. <laughs> I hope you watch some of this. I know a lot of people pop through here and see a few seconds of it. Hang in there and listen to this message today. It's a short 15-minute thought or devotion to help you walk a life of faith starting on the first day of the week. And uh, here at Victorious Living Church, we're celebrating Suit Up Sunday. It's been first fruits, talking about putting first things first all month long. And uh, as a leadership, we say, hey, at the end of this first things first, let's put on our, our Sunday best, as it used to be called. Uh, don't wear these as often as we used to. I used to have a whole closet lined with suits. And uh, I'm kind of glad I don't have to wear these all the time. But once in a while, it's a nice thing. And today we're doing an outward representation of what our heart should be showing toward God, putting on our best. And whatever your best is, that's good enough for the Lord. Just give Him your heart. <laughs> well, this morning I want to talk to you about living in the shadow of the only. The only, O-N-L-Y. You know, there's not very many things that you can only say there's only one of. There are a few things, but even if it's a great baseball player, basketball player, we might find the greatest of all time, the GOAT, and say, you know, there's only one like Michael Jordan, or one like Babe Ruth, or one like Abraham Lincoln as president. And we can find people and things that we say there's only one of. But there's other presidents, there's been other great men, there's been other great baseball players and basketball players. There might be only one greatest of all time, but there's others, and there will be more. And in the category of only, it's very hard to find a singular only, where there's nothing else like it in the same class or category. That's what the word only means. The isolated singular one, the individual alone in a class or category by itself. <coughs> Pardon me. And I can only think of one thing today where the only applies, and that is to God. God is the only God. And I've come to understand more and more and more that many times I have made God in my own thoughts and images to be something that's similar to other things. I've made him be similar like my father when I hear his word, him, him called and addressed father. I've made him similar to the Jesus that I've seen in the nativity scenes or the on the cross. But you know, he is only God, and there is none like Him. And that is significant when we approach this idea of living by faith. The fact that we are saying that the God we serve, the God we adhere our faith to, is the only God. There are no other gods, there's no other belief systems that can lead you to that God than the one we have been given by that only God Himself, the Bible. <clears throat> Let me give you this. <clears throat> In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5 through 6. Isaiah 45, 5 through 6. I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me, so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, people may know there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I want to talk about a couple of things that only apply to God, that only make Him God, and that we can understand and live in that will radically transform how we approach life here and eternity. <clears throat> and especially when difficult and tragic things happen. There's been a very horrible, tragic event in our community here in Central Ohio recently. And many people are shaken by why this sort of thing can happen to somebody who especially served God. And I want to tell you right now, there are some things that only God can answer. The absolute knowledge of all things come from God. He doesn't learn them. He hasn't acquired them. He hasn't learned over the years, everything that is known and can be known comes from God Himself. 
from his own mind, from his own being. So only God knows and understands any event, be it tragic or be it positive. Let me give you some onlys, and then I'll wrap this up. Only Jesus can save, heal, deliver, and set us free from sin and give us hope for eternal life. The book of Acts tells us that there is no other name under heaven by which men might be saved except the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way to salvation. You can't work your way there with good works. You can't get there by religion. You can't get there by believing in Confucius or Buddha or Muhammad or Allah or any other adherence on this earth. According to the Bible and according to what I believe history and creation and millions of other lives having been transformed and by his own testimony, by his death on the cross, his resurrection, Jesus Christ is the only name that brings true salvation, that brings true deliverance, and that gives us hope for eternal life. There is no other name greater than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2, God has given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, of the things above the earth, on the earth, and under the earth. There will come a time when all of the world, every person that has ever lived or is living at the time of Jesus' return, the billions of people will bow to only one person, and that's Jesus Christ. He alone stands as the Savior of the world, and He alone will be the ultimate Lord of all things. He has been given the name now that is above every name. He's not God because we say He's God. He's God because He is God. We only align our life with His Word. Only God knows all things, the beginning and the end. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Only I, God speaking, can tell you the future before it even happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. I, you know, oftentimes we want to know how is it fair that this seemingly good and righteous person suffered when this bad, evil person seems to have a long, extended life? Our sense of fairness and our sense of what we call justice is very much outcome-driven by what we see happening here on the earth. Let me give you a couple of tidbits that the Bible is very clear about. Our ways and God's ways are not the same. He said, my ways are higher than your ways. My ways are past your ways, and they are past finding out. In other words, God's ways are greater and even beyond our total understanding. It always uh, sort of is comical to me that frail human beings, men and women, who cannot keep their marriages together, who cannot keep their bills right, who struggle every day with trying to figure out uh, life's smallest little insignificant details can in their mind somehow question God who knows the beginning from the end of all things already. It's comical to think that my little brain, which weighs just so many ounces or whatever, and my ability to receive information so limited that I pretend to know what's fair in God's eyes, what's just in God's eyes, when we serve a God made in our image that will do what we want, then we'll be disappointed, frustrated, and even turn away when he doesn't do it the way we want it to be done. I'm not talking about how he met your bills. I'm talking about whether or not you lost a loved one before their time, whether you were treated fairly, whether you were abused. And we see this as somehow a deficiency in God, so we have to question why, why, why. Now, it's good to go to God and say, Lord, show me. I don't understand. Why did this happen? He may give you an answer that satisfies your mind, even your heart, but ultimately, He may just say, I alone am God. Trust me. Nobody likes that answer. But that is an answer to prayer that many times people get, and they'll say, well, God didn't answer my prayers. But in fact, God did answer my prayer, just not the answer I was looking for. Anyway, God knows everything from the beginning to the end, and His purposes will be fulfilled. 
You know, when we see people die, we, that's one of the greatest tragedies to us, especially before their time. And I don't pretend to take away the pain and the suffering from losing someone that you don't expect to lose before you go on, especially a child, a spouse. And then you, when you lose them, you wonder, wow, where was God? And the Bible says that precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. Is there something about eternity that's greater than earth? Is there something that God knows about forever <clears throat> that's greater than the earth you and I tend to hold and cling to so tightly as if this is the ultimate of experiences for us? Heaven will be a greater experience for us than anything this earth could ever bring us. It's not a cliche. It's not a cop-out. It's a reality. Every knee will, every tear will be, that we wiped away. There'll be no sorrow, no parting, no sickness. Everything that we struggle with here is gone there. I don't know why things happen all the time. This is the point. Only God knows. People will come to me with the most complex of questions. And I've watched preachers for years try to force answers into a question that they really don't have the full answer for. There's a scripture verse that the Bible says that the secret things are reserved for God. There are things that God knows about us, his plan for us, his destiny for us, his life for us here and in eternity that we do not know. It's a secret that we cannot find out. This is not what we want to hear from preachers. We want to hear preachers say it's going to be all right. The way we sell salvation today is come to Jesus Christ and all your problems will be solved. No, your problems won't be solved. You'll have solutions. You'll have power and faith to overcome when problems aren't solved adequately to your satisfaction. That really is what faith is about. Number three, only God can provide for us love, peace, joy, and faith. James 5, 17, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, comes from above from the Father of lights in whom there is no shadow or variation. Only God can give us love, joy, peace, and fulfillment of on this earth and in the life to come. Folks, there is a life to come. That's, that's been lost on so many of us in the church that this is not the fulfillment of our life. This is just the precursor to eternity and whatever God's plan is for us moving forward in eternity. Finally, only God. Isaiah 40, verse 12 says, Who else has held the oceans in his hand? Who else has measured the heavens with his fingers? Who else knows the weight of the earth? The Bible, another version, says about this verse, that God measures the span of the universe with the span of his pinky to his thumb the span of his hand. He can see all things in just the span of his hand. That brings me great comfort. To the non-believer or immature believer or to uh, people that have accepted this wrong thinking that God is here somehow to serve us, this will seem like a very inadequate answer. But in the end, I do not know why many things happen. I'm not sure what their purpose was. In the case of the Israelites, God said, I will cause you to flourish even though you don't acknowledge me because I want to show the world that I am here. Sometimes the purposes of life aren't about what happens for you individually, but what God is getting out of you and through you. I know this, only God can be my Savior and Lord. And when I serve an only God, I can only have his outcomes, whatever they may be. He will be with me if it's hard. He will be with me when it's easy. He will be at the mountains and the valleys, for there's no place he's not. He'll know my beginning from my end in every situation because there's nothing he doesn't know. He will comfort me when I seem comfortless. He will bring me hope when it seems hopeless because he is all these things. Do you know him only as God in your life? He's the only God. Class all by himself. 
He's the definitive of all definitions. He is the epitome of all epitomies. He is the end of all results. He is the thing of all things. There is nothing beside him, before him, and there'll be nothing after him. He alone has always been and always shall be. Only he knows everything because he is everything. I pray God's blessing will be on you today as you magnify the Lord in your thinking, taking off the limits of who you think God is and allowing him to show you his onlyness. And when we see him face to face, we will see the fulfillment of all things we've looked for here but could not find in any other only. If only I could get a new house, if only I could get a spouse, if only I could get that raise, if only I had more money, if only I had a new car. <laughs> There's only one only. If only I could trust God. And guess what? He'll help me do that if I put my trust in him just even a little bit. Well, God bless you. If you are part of Victorious Living Church today, we have four children that still need sponsored out of 70. 66 children have been sponsored already for this year. 25 people have joined our 51,000 club for this year, our partnership. <clears throat> it's halfway to our goal. If you'd like to help us in any way, go to victoriouslivinginternational.com. Big long word, victoriouslivinginternational.com. Uh, and look at what God's doing in Pakistan, the Philippines, Nigeria, Africa, Romania, around the world through this global ministry based here in Grove City, Ohio. <laughs> Join us at 1045 for a live service at Victorious Living Church, Facebook page, and we'd be glad to see you here in person at 1045 if you are in the Central Ohio area. God bless you. Remember these words from 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Bishop Ed Akers telling you have a great week, be victorious, <clears throat> and remember the only God 